Hi, I'm Ray Swanson with XCOM Systems, and today we're going to talk about and demonstrate our application program called Spectro X. One of the dilemmas faced by engineers once they've recorded RF spectrum using, for example, the IQC 2110 is the need to search through that spectrum, perhaps to isolate a particular carrier that might be causing uh, a design, a, a particular problem once it's fielded or to be able to parse through spectrum, isolate known carriers, looking for a particular carrier of interest that may not necessarily have been anticipated when they were designing a particular device that's under test. It sometimes can be a very difficult problem because these files can be very, very long, they could be terabytes in length, and the RF spectrum that they're looking at can be very crowded. So what's needed is a way to very rapidly parse through the spectrum, isolate those things that they know about or that are not of concern in terms of the design under test and quickly focus on particular carriers noting where they're located in the spectrum and perhaps being able to even observe their behavior so that designs can be more robust and more predictable once they're deployed in the field. So we're going to use a couple of demonstration files and, and highlight some of the main features of SpectroX uh, hopefully being able to demonstrate its uh, ability to very rapidly parse spectrum and find that particular needle in a haystack. One of the things that you'll notice immediately about Spectrum X is the multiple windows that can be opened and operating simultaneously, allowing you to visualize the spectrum in multiple domains. Here we see activity not only in the time domain and a power histogram in the time domain, but as well real-time display of frequency domain uh, and power spectrum also in the frequency domain. The larger two windows are a playback spectrogram showing time since the beginning of the file, frequency, uh, and since this has been uh, brought down to baseband, uh, we're centered at zero with a capture bandwidth here shown uh, at over uh, 100 megahertz and a third dimension indicating power levels. Uh, higher up into the uh, yellows and reds indicating higher power levels, blues and violets indicating lower power levels. And finally a persistent spectrogram which is very useful in finding uh, carriers that perhaps are intermittent in nature or to be able to visually show um, how often a particular carrier shows up in the recorded spectrum. Uh, what is going on here is that the, the persistent spectrum has memory that can be adjusted by the user um, to uh, erase or allow the decay of a uh, displayed spectrum to occur very quickly or to, uh, if we set it to be infinite, to never occur. So that a particular carrier, which again shows up very intermittently, is still captured in time even though the instantaneous display um, is, is uh, being occupied by different carriers and in some cases the ability, as we'll see very uh, useful later on, carriers that show up um, at frequencies that overlap perhaps a carrier of interest. The basic functionality of the playback and control capabilities are very similar to a digital video recorder or uh, a, uh, a VCR with play, reverse, stop, and pause. But we also provide the user the ability to jump through the file with user settable jump increments to speed up or to slow down uh, the rate at which the carrier is, or at the rate at which the spectrum is displayed uh, in the uh, waterfall displays in particular. And as we'll get into in a lot more detail here in a little bit, uh, the ability to search through the file for carriers of interest and to then be able to zoom in uh, on a particular portion of the spectrum, uh, of the spectrum recording once we've found a particular carrier of interest.